He gained exactly, I'll tell you exactly what he gained. What's up guys and welcome. You're watching Fancy Fitness. We are just under two weeks out of the Arnold Classic South America. And all of us are really excited for this battle between Rafael Brandao and Tonio Button. And Rafael Brandao's coach, Neil Hill, categorically said that there was a 15 pounds of a difference between 2022 and 2024. And we are not talking about the weight a few days out of the show. We are talking about the weight on the stage. And 15 pounds is a lot of lean muscle to gain in just one and a half years. He's, he gained exactly 15 pounds compared to his last stage, stage weight on stage, on stage, because I was weighing him every two hours. And when we left the hotel room, he was 16 pound up. So his coach Neil Hill mentioned that they weighed him just before leaving the hotel room for the prejudging. And there is pretty much a mutual consensus that out of all the guys who took the whole year off after the Olympia 2022, guys like James Harlingshead, guys like Antoine Weiland, Shaban, Rafael Banda was the one who made the maximum impact on his comeback. He is the one who made the maximum improvements. So Brenda published another physical update where he weighs 271 pounds. And he is right where he needs to be at less than two weeks out of the show. So why this battle between these two guys, Rafael Brandao and Antonio Button, is gonna be interesting? It's because Rafael Brandao does have a bigger structure. He's a taller guy, he has a bigger frame, and he has some amazing front and the side shots. But Antonio Button's back is just unbelievably good, and it is so damn complete top to bottom. And this is where he can edge out Rafael Brandao. So yes, I know size is a major criteria still for the men's open bodybuilding. And if you have two guys, Two athletes with amazing shapes, amazing flow, two of the most aesthetic physics out there, very similar to each other. But if one guy is taller, the taller guy will always have the edge over the short guy. The taller guy almost always wins. I mean, let me give you an example of Lex Wheeler and Sean Ray. Both had amazing shapes. I mean, Sean Ray was one of those guys who wasn't missing anything. He was one of the most complete bodybuilders ever. But he stood no chance against the likes of Lex Wheeler especially when Flex Wheeler was on. So, speaking from that perspective, Rafael Brandao does have an edge over Tonio Burton. He does have the upper hand. And Neil Hill is a great coach. So, it is highly unlikely that they are going to miss on the conditioning mark. In fact, there is a very high likelihood that Rafael Brandao is going to be in a bad condition compared to what we saw at the on crossing Ohio stage. So, watching Tonio Burton getting compared to the likes of Dexter Jackson, one of the best the bodybuilding world has ever seen, that is such a great sign and such an honor for Tonio Button. And he really deserves that. So Tonio Button did only one Olympia in the 212 plus. That was back in 2021, where he was able to crack top 10. But he immediately decided to switch to the men's open bodybuilding. And now the guy is top 8 in the world. And that is such a huge achievement. And people really forget that Tonio Button was able to beat Regan Grimes at this past Mr. Olympia. And that was probably the best Regan Grimes that we have ever seen. So Antonio Button was able to beat a bigger and a taller bodybuilder. And Regan Grimes and Rafael Brandao have very similar characteristics. So I believe it is going to be a great battle in two weeks time at the Arnold Classic South America. William Martins is once again going to be the heaviest guy on the Arnold Brazil stage. But will all that muscle translate on the stage? Because it certainly did not translate on the stage at the Legion Sports 2023. And at that time, he was weighing close to 290 pounds. But this time, William Martins is working with a different coach. And the plan is to focus on the conditioning rather than the size. But still, he is 15 pounds heavier than his fellow countryman, Rafael Brandao. But in this kind of lineup, he's gonna be the odd man out. Because he lacks the aesthetics compared to almost all of the other top guys. So the chances of him getting in that first call out, that are looking kinda slim. So William Martin is doing Detroit Pro up next. And if I'm not mistaken, this is his third year fighting to get his first professional win and get his ticket to the Olympia stage. Get his first ever Mr. Olympia qualification. Talking about the Arnold Brazil, we all would have loved to see some sneak peek of Carlos Thomas Jr. But there has been a total silence on his Instagram, on all of his social media platforms. And that is for the past 3 or 4 weeks now. Even his last YouTube video was published 3 weeks ago. And that wasn't 3 weeks out. So he is the wild card in there. 
Because here is the fact. When he did that guest posing about 5 or 6 weeks before the Texas Pro, he impressed almost everyone in the bodybuilding world. So many legends of the sport started there and then that this guy can be a future Mr. Olympia. And he was really impressive at Texas Pro last year as well, despite not being in a condition that either Hunter LeBrotta or Andrew Jack brought. But there is a tons of muscle on his frame. He's packed with muscles on top of muscles. And with all that size, he has great aesthetics as well. He flows extremely well. So can he shock the bodybuilding world in two weeks time? Do let me know what you guys think. Since we are talking about the Arnold Brazil, let's not forget about Good Vito, who is making his men's open bodybuilding debut in two weeks time. So tons of hype behind this guy. And that is for years now actually. If you guys remember, even before switching to the IFB Pro League, even before getting his pro card, he was still very famous on various bodybuilding platforms. So this is gonna be a big test for him and how his physique compares to some of the top pros in the men's open bodybuilding, specifically Rafael Brandao and Tony Burton, who are both top 10 Olympians. So at such a young age, he has incredible body parts. For instance, his quads are amazing, one of the best set of wheels out there. So he's gonna be very competitive in some shots, like the front double biceps, and his most muscular is equally impressive. He's probably gonna be really competitive in all of the front shots. But we aren't really sure about his back shots as of right now. Overall, I believe the Arnold Brazil is gonna be one hell of a show. It has been a while since the two times Arnold Classic champion and two times runner up at Mr. Olympia, Terence Ruffin, put out a physique update. So here he is now, giving us an update of his offseason look. So last year, he was able to make it back into the top five. Although he was looking for a higher spot, but still that was a step in the right direction. But more important than that, the physiques that he displayed in multiple shows that he did in 2023, they were improved in every single aspect compared to 2022, when he dropped down to 6th spot. So overall, it was a great year for Terence Ruffin. So why has he been skipping the Arnold Classic for two consecutive years now? That is one of the most frequently asked questions about him. So the answer to that question is very simple and logical. He doesn't want to show up on stage exactly the way he was last time. He wants to improve. Plus, I have mentioned this a couple of times now, that Towns is the only guy out of the top 5 in classic physique, actually out of the top 7 in classic physique, who has so much room to grow, who has the most room to grow actually. And it is going to be some time before he hits his weight cap. So all the other guys, they are hardly making weight. So that is really a plus for Towns Ruffin. And that puts him in a great position for 2024. So he is already qualified for the Olympia 2024. He won Shiro Classic, which was post-Olympia. So he is another guy who wants to retire from combative bodybuilding before he turns 35 and winning at least one Mr. Olympia. That is on his bucket list. So do let me know what you guys think. Can he do that? Can he win the biggest bodybuilding show in classic physique? Also, hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.